Okay, things have changed a lot in NASCAR since I made this banger two years ago. There's entire new tracks that never before existed, new cars, new drivers, everything is much different. Years ago, I watched this video about weird areas at MLB stadiums, so it got me thinking. I know this can apply to NASCAR, and you already know. I once again created a full list of all of these weird areas. Some of these make virtually no huh? sense. We should not here in 2023 be at any oval, Martinsville to Talladega, without safer barriers on every single wall inside and out. I am a big believer in that. So safer barriers have been a standard at NASCAR tracks, but Nashville Speedway was missing one on one of their inside walls. And Ryan Blaney got into a weird crash that caused him to hit it. In reality, Nashville probably never expected anyone to hit this wall at high speeds, but the fact that he went head on with it makes it a little worse. He never got back right, and I don't know why there's no safer barrier there. That's pretty ridiculous, honestly. The thing is, there are other tracks that don't have safer barriers and in much more dangerous places, such as the Chicago Street Course, and even the next track that we're going to talk about, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So there's one specific thing that I've always found weird about Indy. This is one of, if not the only scoring pylons in racing that has the potential to be hit by a car. And over the years, I've seen cars get propped up onto walls, and it can't be impossible to think that one day a car could hit this. And especially when you consider that this very part of the track is when the drivers will be at their fastest. I've always thought of it as a very dangerous part of the speedway. I'm even looking at this photo right now, and it almost looks like a ramp that could launch a car upwards. I did a little digging on one of my favorite sites, Reddit, and I feel like I struck gold. I found a thread that was written by a user named It's Denny Time 11. Great name, by the way. It's Denny Time. And I can't believe someone has actually thought of this before as well. To summarize, apparently this stemmed from a dream that this person had where specifically Simon Paginow flew into the pylon. Why did it have to be him? I don't know. Poor guy. I'm not really sure what the alternative is because the pylon is an iconic part of the speedway. Now, NASCAR doesn't race on the main configuration anymore, so it doesn't pose as much of an issue for this form of motorsport. And you know what? I I think there's something weird about the Indy road course configuration too. I would have never thought of this if Ross Chastain didn't do it, but there's actually a shortcut in this track after turn one. It's a little access road separate from the track, but by taking this route, it's actually faster than the main course itself. But obviously it's not permitted to use in an actual race, despite Chastain attempting it. And I'm thinking his team had to have mapped this out pre-race and had the knowledge to use at their disposal whenever necessary. It's just so weird that this exists and that someone genuinely tried it, and that it's faster than the normal way. I can't believe they turned the streets of Chicago into a road course. And what immediately stood out to me was this little square box that lies at the end of one of the longer straightaways. I am not gonna make a turn, not gonna make it, so I'm just gonna bail out. And then in front it was, hey, caution, slowing down and not all of them got slowed down. Boom, a little contact right there. Of course, this strange area of the track is so that if a driver overshoots the corner, they don't crash. But the runoff area is so shallow that there might as well not even be one. And worse yet, if you're unlucky enough to find yourself in this square, it's nearly impossible to turn around. It's very common for street courses to have little runoff areas like this, and I don't watch much street racing, but I have never seen an area like this one. And most of the other corners at this track did have tire barriers at the very end, which makes perfect sense. But drivers kept getting stuck underneath them, which was very unusual. Noah Gregson even found the tire barrier three times in a single race, and he got stuck every single time. Sometimes it goes unnoticed that an area at a NASCAR track is actually weird until somebody finds it. Did you know that at Richmond Raceway there's actually a really weird strip of pavement along the wall separating the track from pit road? Most NASCAR infields just have grass that continues all the way up to the wall. But I found that Richmond is an outlier. The funny thing is that I ended up finding this out when I was playing NASCAR Heat. In a way, this could be a shortcut, but you would lose the momentum you'd otherwise have by just driving the track normally. NASCAR also likely wouldn't allow you to use this, but say there's a huge pileup on the front straightaway and you need to get by. Maybe this could be used to avoid the crash. If there's any race car drivers watching this video, you're welcome for the advice. The surface of Phoenix Raceway was repaved in 2011, and this weird thing started to happen where drivers could find speed by dipping their left side tires under the painted yellow line. 
over the years, this groove expanded to where drivers have flat out driven multiple lanes below the line. So why exactly did this become a thing? My theory was that this groove may have always been fast, and maybe we just never knew it because there was grass in that area before 2011. I think the counter to this was to add a grip strip, also called PJ1, to the top lanes of the track. But I'm honestly not a fan. I think if you have to use a substance on a racetrack, the racetrack probably isn't great. But in Phoenix's case, I don't think they needed to add it at all. Something similar happened earlier in 2023 when NASCAR returned to North Wilkesboro. The older a set of tires got in a race, the further their drivers would dive onto the apron when exiting turn number four. Tells you all you need to know about these tires. Look at the grip he has to drive up off the corner. Speeds in the corners would get much slower the later it got into a run, so diving down here for extra grip made perfect sense. Sonoma Raceway has 11 turns, and the 11th one is by far the weirdest one. You'll never find a corner like this in all of NASCAR. There's nothing stopping you from cutting the course here. All you really have is these tires for guidance. A little fun fact is that EA Sports must not have known how to stop players from cutting this corner, because in their old NASCAR games, they placed an entire wall here without there ever having been one in real life. Cutting this corner would be the most obvious time saver, but in a race in 2023, Tyler Reddick thought outside the box where he drove backwards in order to save time. He got a flat tire while exiting this corner, and Jamie McMurray pointed out that he would have to drive the whole two mile track like this. It's almost like Reddick was listening because he thought to just do a simple U-turn to avoid the inconvenience. Can you do that, Larry? I mean, he, he, he did it. I don't know if you can do it or not. <laughs> you, but he did. you can do anything you want. That's right. I I did. Did. The two super speedways in NASCAR are what I'd consider the fan favorites, but that doesn't excuse them from any flaws. You can't even run on the banking at, at, at 55, 30 miles an hour. The 31 and 33 degrees of banking is so steep that cars will sometimes get stuck between the track and the apron after crashing. The angle difference is so dramatic that it can wedge a car in a certain way where none of the tires can reach the ground. And the most obvious case of it was here with Clint Boyer. One of the most undisputed weird areas in all of NASCAR tracks is the pit road at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Pit road at most NASCAR ovals starts at turn number four, but at Atlanta, you have to commit on the back stretch and before turn three. This is because drivers wouldn't be able to safely slow down for the normal pit road entry because Atlanta is much faster and has more banking. So in order to pit under a green flag, you have to follow a very slow pace speed for pretty much three fourths of a mile. If you have an issue under green, this will cause you to lose two laps at the very least. Phoenix Raceway may be the only other non-traditional pit road because they changed the position of the start finish line, but not how pit road works at all. Drivers now enter the pits in turn two and exit right after passing the start finish line. I'm so thankful that you guys stayed till the end because you're actually a big reason why this channel gets recommended so much. I have a lot of fun with videos like this, so hit subscribe and I'll make even more.